Aloha Aina, I'm Ahu Kekahu Cardwell with Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. We were saddened to hear the other day of the passing of Lehulu Master Auntie Paulette Kahalipuna. Auntie Paulette and her late mother Mary Lou were both world-class experts at the ancient Hawaiian art of making feather lays or Lehulu. We interviewed Paulette here on Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future almost two years ago. And in addition to explaining the history of Lehulu and how it's done, she gave us a grand tour of her store in Honolulu. We're told that store will now be managed by Paulette's daughter, so the tradition will continue. We want to honor Auntie Paulette for who she was and all she did for Hawaii's culture. So we'd like to share with you once again our visit with her with a little extra footage of our interview added for your enjoyment. So sit back. Relax and join us as we remember Auntie Paulette Kahalepuna. Aloha Aina, and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future, brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. I'm Ahu Kekahu Cardwell, and here we are today in Kapiolani Park on the island of Oahu. We have a wonderful guest on the show. Let's go on over here and meet her, Paulette. Aloha. 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 How are you? I'm wonderful, and yourself? Wonderful, thank Fabulous. you. My Kai, thank you for being on the show. Mahalo for being on Voices of Truth. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, good afternoon. This is Paulette Kahalipuna. Wonderful. And we're standing in Kapiolani Park. Yes. And the reason we're standing here is because not, a, not only because it's a beautiful day. Yes. But because right up the street from where we are right now, you have a shop. Yes, I do. And you have a very interesting business, don't you? Thank you. Yes, I do. And it's one of a kind, really. Wow. Yes. Tell us what that is, Paulette. Well, um, Nalima Milihulu Noel is the name of the shop. And what does that mean? It means the skilled hands that touch the feathers. The skilled hands that, that touch, touch the, the feathers. feathers. Right. A name wow. given to um, Mom, Mary Lou Kekueva, Auntie Mary Lou, as mo many people knew her. Yes. Um, given that name by Auntie Edith Kanaka Ole. Oh, wow. Many years ago, um, Mom was searching for a name for her business, and she had talked started with various kupuna and Auntie Edith presented her with that name. So it was actually your mom, Auntie Mary Louise, that started the business, yes? Yes. And what year was that? Uh, we actually opened our business in 1991. Uh-huh. So this year we made 20 years. When mom learned this, it became just kind of a hobby. Uh-huh. And then learned about Kahili construction because that was used in the royal courts in the days of old. And so, but where did we get the feathers? In the 50s, our feathered uh, friends, our native birds were either extinct or endangered, so of course we couldn't go out and gather. Right. So we needed to, a source, and the feathers at the time in the 50s were from another island. And Mama loved this story, Long Island, New York. <laughs> you know that island. Where? Yes, that <laughs> island. You know, and everyone was saying, "Where? Kahu Lavi, Kauai, where?" You know, no, 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 no. Long Island. As a resource, we could call and say. I need a pound of this or I need a pound of that. Right. And just so we had feathers to work with, uh -huh. um, there are no fake feathers yet. And as long as they're available, they're byproducts. We eat chicken, duck, rooster, sure. turkey. You know, what, where's, what do you do with the feathers? Right. So as a resource, we at least have that. Wow. You know, we're not sitting cutting paper or anything, but we have feathers. Wow. And even though we have to have them dyed mm -hmm. so that they do that replication of when we do our lehulu or the ahuula the cape or the mahi oli the helmet or the kahili, we can at least have resources of natural feathers dyed. Uh huh. But just to emulate the work of our kupuna. Wow, super. So, uh, Paulette, you just uh, you just listed all the different uh, ways in which feathers are used right. in the Hawaiian culture. Right. For the first of all, for the lays. Yes. Also for the capes. Yes. 
also for the mahi, mahi, ole, the, mahi ole, the helmet, as well as the standard bearers, the kahili, right. which uh, denote royal rank, yes? yes. Yes. Right, and most people, I think, have at one time or another seen those. They may not have known what they are, but they're right. they're pretty famous icons, pretty yes. well-known icons, I should say, in the Hawaiian culture. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, if you saw them coming, it's like looking at these coconut trees and palm trees. You see something like that, you, you, your attention is drawn to them. You can't miss it. No, can't miss it. The yeah. height, the ma ma majesty. Yes. And then when you see kahili, whether it's done with flower ornately or crepe paper. If you've ever been to Hawaii and you see that cylinder shape and a pole and someone carrying it, you kind of pay attention. Yes. You know. You better pay attention. Oh yeah. Oh definitely. <laughs> Paulette, how far back in the culture, in the Hawaiian culture, do the use of these things go actually? How um, far back have they been traced? They're still being traced, actually. Really? When you, you know, because people are now being more mindful. Uh -huh. So then the questions come up, like you've just asked, you know, so when did it start? How did it come here? So we're still, you know, kind of researching that. Uh -huh. each, each time I do a presentation or lecture or something like this, it poses a question and then it stimulates the audience. And they kind of respond to that yes. because they remember the tutu or the grandpa right. or the uncle right. telling them the stories. And that's how we're getting that dating, yes. that time of when it was probably done. When we look at many of the older kahili at the Bishop Museum and those that used to be at the palace and Queen Emma Summer Palace in various locations, we're looking at bird's feathers that are protected today. Like the Eva, the Kauai Ula, the Kauai Kea, uh, many of our um, seabirds' feathers mm -hmm. were used primarily for the kahili because they could stand the weather conditions and ah. so forth. So they were sturdy. Um, very sturdy. Yeah. And then the material that were the base for them for the branches and such were Ie Ie and Olona. We don't gather these things today because they're endangered. Huh? Well, they're endangered and then it's finding them. Ah. Much of the EAE, you have to go into valleys because it's a parasite plant. We don't have nurseries that we go get. Yes. And yes. we're not planting them ourselves in our gardens. Yes. So to find the Olona, you had to go Mauka. Yeah. To find the EAE, you had to go Mauka. You had to go way up in the mountains. Right, but then our mountains were here. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is all filled in land. Yeah. You know, it was so very different yes. in the 1500s yes. and the 1600s, yes. you know. So where they could get the materials close at hand, today we cannot. When a lot of people look at these objects, whether they're kahili or whether they're the feather capes, I think maybe some people think that because they're made of feathers that they're flimsy and that's not the case at not all, at are all. they? They're very sturdy, they're hardy. The, the word cool, you know, to stand, to stand tall, tall, proud, yes. uh -huh. you know, that in itself is an indication. But then of course when you t speak to anyone from Hawaii, regardless of the nationality, when you say kahili, Everybody sees that. Yes. It's an automatic. Yes. Mm -hmm. But before the feathers go on, whether it's a kahili or whether it's a feather cape mm -hmm. or mahi oli, the, 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 uh, the helmet, there's uh, a lot of, uh, I'll say, superstructure underneath right. that is constructed first. That's right. very st sturdy. Mm -hmm. And it's only the feathers that are put on last. Right. Right? Right. Wow. And you know, the, the tufts or the bundles of the feathers, like say for the mahi oli and the the uh, ahuula yeah. were done with a, if you had a parakeet gathering those feathers on the on the paper that you clean out of the cage yes if you took five to seven of those and wash them yes and then laid them one on top of the other and bundle them very carefully together that was one uwo wow for the one little puka on the netting whether it was the mahi ole or the ahu and today we use feathers like these that are much larger so we do an inch rather than these little itty bitties, but we still do the three wraps and half inch, the bundling, making those uwo for the artwork. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. But the olona and the, the cordage that was used to make the netting and such, today, you know, we go look for netting. We sure. don't make our own netting. Sure. The folks that 
you know, we remember people going down to the Alawai made their own crab net. Mm -hmm. People that went out to get opelu, they made their own netting. You know, very few, if at all, do people make their own netting today. Um, the substitution over the years, that material that they once used, they no longer gather. Paul, it back in the old days, it wasn't everybody that made these objects. There were very few specific people that were trained from childhood to make them. Exactly. A and so today, I know that there's, like today, you know, there's not a whole bunch of people that make these. No. Very few, and they're specialists because it's a very intricate, specialized yes. process to make them, yeah? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So those people that were selected, they were well trained, they knew how to identify the birds, they knew where in the uh, valleys or throughout the uh, forested area and when they were most available. Common, you know, when we think logically, availability of feathers during molting season. So they weren't out just destroying the forest to get the birds and right. depleting the forest of these birds. There were only certain times of the year you could get right. the feathers. During molting season. Right. And moreover, there were, I guess, two different categories of people. The people that actually got collected the feathers mm -hmm. and then they you know if they trapped the birds they got the feathers and released the birds yeah right. and then there were the people that they gave the feathers to that, that actually, actually made the the and it was the kani it was the guy it was the men because wow. of the mana so because these were things that were made uh, for our ali'i oh so the ali'i kani his helmet his mahioli his ahu his cape was made by men because of the mana. How many people today are skilled in this art of lay feather making and making, able to make, you know, capes and things like that? Um, maybe a couple handful. Really? Yes. Wow, so like, you're talking like maybe 10, 12 people. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. and you're one of them. Loosely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any loosely about it, Paulette. You were, I knew your mama, you were trained well. She was fabulous. She yes. was a master yeah. at this. So my dad, for me, fortunately, before he passed, he taught three students and one completed theirs, wow. Brother Franklin Powell. And he wore his ahu to the canonization of, of Father Damien and wore it to Mount Sinai with his ahu and his malo and he chanted. And then he came back and he went to Machu Picchu and he wore his ahu and he chanted. When I was first asked after dad passed away, he said, Oh, we want to learn kahili making. And I'm like, okay, dad, you got to help me with this one, you know. <laughs> help me with my hands and help me to recall, you know, the classes yeah. and such. And um, I'm happy to say that I have over 12 students that are doing ahu. I have six that have finished. You were trained from very young to do this, yes? Uh, actually, I was a junior in high school. Wow. When I first saw mom doing it and I asked if she would teach me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it's... Uh, no wonder you're so good. Oh, uh, thank you. It's, yeah, a lot of years. Wow. <laughs> now, these objects, uh, you know, contain uh, a lot of what the culture calls mana. Mm -hmm. or the, the energy of people yes. that have worn them mm -hmm. or that they're about, yeah? Yes, yeah. So and that's, it, a, that's yeah. a heavy duty thing. It is, well, it, depending on um, maybe the organization you belong to or the hui you belong to, mm -hmm. uh, a lot more people today are using it for hula adornment. Yes. And one of the kupuna that for her to see someone wearing hulu as an adornment for hula, for her it's inappropriate because yeah. this was ali'i adornment. It, is, it wasn't used like that in the yeah, old days. Exactly. It was a much more serious right. use. It, there was a, a, a religious, not a re necessarily religious, but yes. Spiritual, respect, yes. Spiritual, respect, very spiritual, respect. Uh, and also for, you know, rank and the things rank, like that. Right, yeah. because we, I mean, here in Hawaii we don't have precious stones, we don't have diamonds and pearls and, and so forth. This was our precious commodity, uh -huh. our hulu. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now, Paulette, i got to ask you the big question. <laughs> We've been walking here through Kapi'olani Park yes. talking about this. Yeah. And I know your shop's right up the street. Yes. What do you say? We hop in the car, okay. go up there, and you give us a tour of your shop. Cool. I'm dying to see what's inside. <laughs> okay. Can we do that? Yes. Let's go. In 1991, when I approached my parents and said, you know, I think we should open a business. Mom, you mentioned this once before, 
and so let's look into it. And she says, are you kidding? I'm 65, dad's 70, we're too late, we're too old. No, 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 mom. And you know, the saying goes, you build it, they will come. Right. And I said, you have such a reputation and people will come, mm -hmm. you know. So mom and dad started looking for a location and we live not very far from here up Mount Alani Heights and the location of Kapahulu, you know, in when you look at and talk start with many of our old timers, Kapahulu was quite the happening place. Yes, There's, back in the old days. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it just kind of fit with mom and and dad and the just the whole atmosphere of Kapahulu. We've been here twenty years and uh, we continue to offer classes here in the shop. That's what these tables are right. for, right? This is where the it's class is. working area. Wow, look at this. So we start here, so, you know, we're set up like we have placemats and here's where you sit. Here's where you sit and learn how to do sit. this. Here are the most favorite colors, red and gold. The ones that you run out yeah, of. Yeah, right. all the time. Gotcha. But, but you've got every color here. Yes. My like goodness. the color of the rainbow. Wow. In this uh, picture frame here, these feather items are belong to my great grandmother, who's the lady in the center. These right here. Yes. And that's her right and there. And she's wearing wow. that lei, and that's the remnants of what's left of that lei, that yellow lei. Wow. And the hairpiece that's above that she has on her head, and the lei kamoi, which is below, are bantam chicken, which is a, a bird that was found a lot on all the islands. Mm -hmm. The bantam chicken. So they use that feather a lot for the browns and so forth. Um, this picture here of dad right next to it has a feather lay that was done by one of our Kane students using dyed goose feathers. But they wanted to honor him. You know, they made the lay, they came in and they said, Auntie Mary Lou, I brought this lay for Uncle Paul. And she looks at them and says, but Uncle died. I know, but I came to put it on his picture. <laughs> you know, because they wanted to gift him something. Sure. These are hand kahili or kahili paalima. And in doing our research... So these would be held by a person as they walk. These were carried, right. And so many times when the Ali'i did more recently, like during, I, I would say, safely say from uh, maybe Kamehameha IV, he, during his time and such, there were, there's evidence that there were times that they just couldn't gather an entourage to go meet a delegate or go to a particular meeting. So they would take a kahili, Either they would carry themselves as, so it's like a pre-announcement. Yes. They're coming, pay attention. Yes. Or it would be carried by a retainer back of them mm -hmm. and still getting the attention of the person, mm -hmm. persons around. Mm -hmm. If you were in the Ka'u Desert and you were coming up to Ocean View, you would know someone was coming because of the presence of the magnificence of the Kahili. And you would know to get out of their way. Yes, and be prepared. Be prepared, you know, yeah. If you needed to have some may I or uh, some inu or whatever the case might be something to eat something yes, to drink right yes. and that you would have it prepared because you knew someone was coming mm -hmm. and it wasn't to be afraid of although there's some stories that say that you know the shadows didn't fall on the ali'i and so forth um, but out of respect yes you would prostrate yourself but then you were there in case they needed comfort so here's exactly. one that's much larger right and I can see looking in here all of the structure inside that holds these feathers on right. here. And, and very modern. Uh, these are feathers that are, um, are dyed goose. Mm -hmm. These were dyed Canada goose. Mm -hmm. This is regular dyed goose and rooster hackles. But they're done on picks and attached to barbecue sticks. And the holes are drilled into the pole and stuck into it, rather than the lashing that, it, that was done right. with the old timers. Um, How long does it take to make something like this? Um, that? If you have enough manpower, something that could be done within three months. Really? But it's the time. Yeah. And and, and that would be gathering a nice size army. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it could take as much as a year. Wow. Yeah. So this really is, I mean, what we're talking about here in the store really is labor of love. Yes. That's Almost what it is. Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. So in using the dyed colors, um, we accomplish a goal. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, a lot of people, like in, in this case here, we have more natural feathers in the hand kahili, so rooster hackles that are not dyed, pheasant feathers that are not dyed. You know, people want to get to a more natural rather than the dyed materials. Yes. So duck is used. How beautiful. Um, yes, they're magnificent. And, and of course, in the natural light, if we were to have Eva or the Kauai'ula, in fact, 
I have some tail feathers here from the Kauai Ula. Oh, and look there's at that. only one on the tail of a tropic bird. Wow. One. We've been lucky enough because of what we do and how we teach that we've had wonderful gifts that have been shared by families mm -hmm. whose family members may have done the work at one time and it's in their house but they don't know what to do with it. Mm. So we're kind of a modified collection museum sort of thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, half museum, <laughs> half part museum. We don't part charge an admission. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed there's some beautiful things over here and of course more feathers. Yes. These are gorgeous. Look at these feathers here. Yeah, wow. Those are feathers. Beautiful. The Kolohala. My goodness. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yeah, and, and actually in the making of the feather lei specifically, um, there were two typical styles of okay. feather lei. Like we've been wearing a modified format, but feather lei was done. Oh, wow. Vili poi poi. Wow, this look at that. This is hand tying every feather one at a time to a center core. And how long does it take to make something like About that? About 80 hours. 80 hours. Yes. Wow. Yes. And then the other traditional format would be the lay kamoi. Wow. And it's quite evident. It's two styles. Yes. Totally so different. Kamoi, the feathers turning out. Kamoi, the feathers laying down. But yet all hand tied or vili style and three wraps and a half hitch. So if anybody does has done any fly tying, they know what a half hitch is, mm. or any ropes and such. Wow. But every single feather individually is then hand tied, one at a time. Then we consider this style of lei more contemporary, at least we do, because this was done after metal needles were introduced. I see. Hawaii had no needles. They had coral, shell, and bone as a needle, subs not a substitute, that was what they had. Right. And until the early explorers, adventurers, happen chance, people came, merchants, with metal, then we adapted mm -hmm. using that metal and thread. We had olona, which is a fine fiber that could use as thread and cordage. Yes. But we didn't have, you know, we didn't do this style. And we don't have a, a specific date and time as to when this particular style was done. But this is called humu papa. Humu is a style of stitching. Papa is flat. And this is all kolohala. How and beautiful. And there's four stitches on every oh, single wow. feather. So that as you're stitching, you're stitching four times on each feather. My goodness. And wow. This I made for my husband many, many years ago. Wow. So, you know, in the technique of lane making, these are your basics. And this wait, is wait, wait. Your these are your basics? Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is your basic style. The basic styles. Of lei. Vili poi poi, vili kamoi, humu papa. Wow. But so, you can do some very, very uh, intricate things yes. with those yes. styles. Yes, yeah. like what we're wearing. Yeah. It's the two the two techniques. The flower portion is the Vili Poi Poi. Gotcha. The calyx section is the Lake Kamoi. So point it outward, point it inward. Right. So gotcha. you're, you're, you're creating another look, but using the two techniques. Wow, how beautiful. Yeah. Paulette, you have customers, clients from all, all throughout Hawaii yes. in your store, but also all throughout the world, yeah? Yes. Yes. Wow. The Pacific Islanders that come here because they're looking for feathers because like we said earlier, they don't have feathers for, yes. from their native birds either. They're yes. extinct or endangered. And uh, so we do get a nice trade from the uh, Samoans and Tongans and Fijian and Rapa Nuans, Maoris, because they use collectively feathers in their art. Sure. Or in their... Um, the ceremonial mats. Sure, but I'm sure that you have clients and customers outside of the Pacific region also, yes. outside of Oceania. Yes. You have people from all over the world, yes. right? Yes. Wonderful. The Wonderful. lady that was here today, who is actually from Scandinavia but now resides in Canada, has learned about our art form and came today. She had a small window in time to learn about this. Anybody who's watching us right now who goes, Man, I would love to get some of those supplies, maybe learn how to do it, or even talk to Paulette about it. Mm -hmm. They can contact you. Yes, and I do have a book. Do you? Yes. Wonderful. Let's yes. see the book. This is our book. Wow. Every day is an art, and it was put together by Mom and I. Yep. And 
It's a complete instructional book. And there's mom. There's your mom. Yeah, oh, there's Bill, mama wow. And some of our students. In fact, this lady, Auntie Ethel Kahalebai, had a shop in Aia. Mm -hmm. And she's passed, and the work is, um, there's no longer anyone teaching through her. And um, Auntie Mary Kovich, who uh -huh. you know. Right. Right. Uh, we have a photo of her as well, but it you know it just Look goes it. through All these the are mama's hands. Wow! Doing the work, the so stages. people can learn by this book yes. the step by step instructions yes. on how to do yes. lehulu. Yes. Wow. Yes. And people can order this book from you by yes. calling you up or ordering it online. Yes. yes? Yeah. Well, I don't know about ordering online. Remember, now, I'm not familiar with that, but okay. they can call me. All right. So people can <laughs> people can call you yeah. and order this book. Yes. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. Yeah. Wow, these are beautiful things. Paulette, I wish we had more time to look around at everything, Thank but you. we gotta we gotta wrap it here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for so sharing welcome. your knowledge and your and and the history of these Thank things. You. It's just so many beautiful things here. Please keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. Thank you. Don't stop. Thank you. Mahalo for being Bye. on Voices of Truth. Oh, you're very and welcome. To our viewers, mahalo to you for joining us on this very special edition. Remember, you can watch us on the web 24-7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com. I'm Ahu K. Kahu Cardwell with the Kiwani Foundation. And until next time, Ahui Ho! Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also, view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.